Hello Interweb, my name is Finn and I live in the town of Silverthorne, Colorado. I've lived here for over 30 years and it's allowed me to uh, be an engineer and run my shop here, what I would say pretty successfully. I've been able to start and uh, run and sell a few companies and I've pretty much lived a pretty satisfying life. However, I'm gonna say about two years ago, I started traveling or doing larger trips on my motorcycle. And I gotta tell you, I really enjoyed them. They were a good time and they let me test the waters on if I could do that kind of trip. So from that, I concluded I need to do the big trip. Let's let the color catch up here, or the light, there we go. And so I've uh, decided to embark on the big trip, the one around the world. So uh, what I'm going to do is show you what I'm doing to prepare for such a big trip. Now, I think, my opinion is, for a trip like this, you should uh, work on your own motorcycle and make it what you want it to be. Sure, you can write a check, get a motorcycle, and off you go. Works great. However, for me, being the kind of guy I am, I want to create my own motorcycle, which I've been creating for quite a few years now. So what I'm gonna do here is, uh, we're gonna start a series of videos called pre-episodes to before me leaving on the big trip, uh, where I show you uh, how I get my bike prepared and myself for this big trip. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna introduce you to my friend on this trip, and that would be Mechanico. Mechanico is a 2013 BMW F800 GS. I bought him as a salvaged motorcycle online. He had a mere 700, I think 704 miles on him at the time. And what I'm going to do is, uh, like I said, we're going to run some pre-episodes here of me doing the final prep. But as you can see, I've already done quite a lot of work on him. So we're going to, or I'm going to show you a really quick montage of me working on mechanical for, gosh, almost the last nine years. Because um, here in Summit County, Colorado, uh, we can only ride for about six months of the year. The rest is pretty much winter. So for these past nine years, I would ride them in the summer, and then in the winter, I would work on them. And that's the result that you see here. So what uh, I'm going to do is I'm going to show you a quick montage to get you caught up to what we have done on Mechanico. And, uh, and then we'll continue with the series until I finally leave on the big trip. So, at this point, cue the montage. So this is how poor Mechanico started his life. Online auction for salvage vehicles. I bought him and had him quickly shipped out to my shop. Here he is at my shop. Notice he needs a front end because there's his front end. It is no longer attached. So the first thing we did is we model up a new front end, some triple trees, put it on the mill, start machining, and when we're all done, we've got a beautiful set of triple trees and a steer tube. These will now accept the WP4860 forks, which are fantastic. All we gotta do now is add a steering stabilizer. So to finish off the front end, we have a Woody's 21 inch front wheel, a 320 centimeter single rotor, we converted from dual rotor to single, and a MotoMaster caliper. Almost forgot, I laid up some stainless steel wheel spacers so they don't groove out like the aluminum ones do and let uh, gunk pass the seal. The rear end also got some love with a brand new rear shock from Tractive, their extreme model with all the bells and whistles. And a matter of fact, I just had it rebuilt with a kit that now gives me three quarters of an inch more travel. Yeehaw! And because motorcycles tend to have two wheels, I have a new rear wheel from Woody's. Uh, with an Excel rim and converted to tubeless. 18 inches, by the way, in diameter. Need a new set of uh, bar clamps and risers, so we modeled something up on the computer. All right, we machined them up and a little lathe work, and there you go. Mount them on the uh, triple trees with a top cap. Looking good. Now we need to make some hand guards, so I'm going to go ahead and bend them using our uh, in-shop bender. Looking good with some brass uh, bar weights on the ends and some guards by Barkbusters. Now we need to mount a headlight, so I modeled up some clamps for the forks to hold the headlight. Here they are, coming off the CNC mill, ready to go. Now we need some side brackets to actually hold 
what is going to be a Baja Designs LP9, a mildly legal headlight, but damn, is it bright. When you put it all together, we get an assembly that looks like this. And then we make some brackets for part of the dash assembly uh, to hold the dashboard and some other components. And we get a front end that looks like this with a set of hella horns to boot. The original radiator got smashed pretty bad in the accident, so I designed this one that should have a lot more cooling capacity than stock. Drafted it up, sent it out to have the core made while I worked on a larger fan, and then of course modeled up a thermostat housing to be machined here uh, that then came out something like this. Then when we mount it all together, uh, we get an assembly that is ready to go and be mounted, which it is right here. Uh, it doesn't have all that crappy plastic on it like the stock one. Super strong, super cool. Ordered a new uh, engine guard from Black Dog. Did a few mods to it to lose some weight and in my opinion make it a little stronger and cleaner looking. With all the mods being done to the suspension it was a nightmare on the side stand length. It was too high, it was too short, so I went ahead and made an adjustable one. With the ABS deleted I now had room to relocate the battery uh, down below behind the motor. Uh, we also put in a Earth X lithium battery. At the same time, we replaced the uh, cheesy shunt style regulator rectifier with a much more efficient series style regulator rectifier. The entire Remus exhaust system was ceramic coated black for performance, safety, and ease of cleaning. Now comes a whopper of a project. We're going to redo and re-engineer the air box on this motorcycle. On, on the uh, current air box are these intake tubes. And this length of intake tube gives us a uh, high horsepower only at high RPM. What I plan to do is we are going to create uh, longer intake tubes that give us more torque. We'll take a hit on horsepower, but we're going to gain torque. And torque is fun. So here I have uh, modeled up um, what I believe the uh, intake tubes should look like as far as length and shape, and um, let's start making them. Taking the computer model, we machine out of some uh, HDF wood the molds. We then coat the molds in urethane so they're slick and non-sticky. Clamp the two molds together using some through bolts. Then we take wax poured into what is called a sprue. Let the wax cool, open the mold, and there you go. You can see the uh, inside shape of the tubes. We then cover the tube in carbon fiber, wet carbon fiber, uh, put it in a vacuum bag, squeeze it real hard, open the vacuum bag, put the tubes in an oven so the wax melts and drains out, and then these are the uh, tubes that we get. Uh, eventually we make some carbon fiber inlets that have a nice round radius. And here's what it all looks like mounted on the bike. Uh, now all we need to do is make the actual air box that goes around these new intake. I did contemplate modeling the air box, but it is such an involved shape with compound angles and round edges and whatnot, I just decided to, uh, what I call sculpt it, out of sheet metal. So here you're gonna see a series of shots where I just kind of winged it, built it up slowly from the bottom up, welded when needed, and then of course uh, I did use um, some brass slotted screws to assemble a lot of it because I thought, well, how often do you see brass slotted screws? Here I am mounting it to the frame, creating the rubberized mounts for that. Uh, I did go ahead and model the lid for the airbox, which you'll see here, and then that was machined on the CNC mill. It does look like a snack tray, by the way. There was a point to that. This is the uh, device or the round opening lid that goes through the lid uh, to allow you to take the lid off. This is the assembly at the bottom of the box that the um, turning device goes into. This is the idle air control valve assembly that is inside the box. And this is a great shot of the box with all the components in it without the tubes. These are the side intake tubes that uh, do have the air cleaner on the side and this is, or the end. And this is a shot inside the air box with those air cleaners. So you get a look something like this and something like that. A little industrial, but uh, that's kind of the theme here. For and if you're going to run a recluse clutch, you better have a left-hand uh, rear brake, which I do here. I modified the ma rear master cylinder to take another line to go up to the left-hand rear brake up by the bars. That's a custom bracket that allows me to run the second uh, lever. Here it is mounted on the bike. You can see the lever on the bottom there. This allowed me to make it past a Black Bear Pass and Telluride. If you've ever ridden it, you know how nice it is to have a left-hand rear brake. I removed the uh, in-tank fuel filter and replaced it with an exterior 
inline fuel filter. Uh, needed to make a bracket to hold it onto the frame, which you see here machined up on the mill. I also machined up an exit nipple on the top of that uh, fuel assembly because the stock one is made of plastic and broke. Speaking of crap that breaks, the fuel rail also made of plastic broke. So I took a block of aluminum, modeled it up, and machined this beauty out of aluminum for the fuel rail. Here you can see it mounted on the engine, ready to go. With a lot of fabrication done, it was time for a tear down. So I took the bike apart, pulled the motor out, put it on a little stand. I even cleaned the motor in this shot. Cut off those goddamn uh, rider pegs that are welded onto the frame. A known weak spot on the F800 is the upper shock bolt. Uh, it is known to bend over time because it doesn't have enough support. So here in this shot, you can see I welded on uh, a second gusset for the shock bolt and I reinforced the frame around that gusset. With the frame and subframe stripped down and all modifications made to it, they were sent out for powder coat. We selected a nice color of bronze to have them done in. Here you can see uh, my dog Emma enjoying a view of the mainframe bronze. We also had a uh, custom badge made for the head tube, just for you, Mechanico. Other parts were also sent out, like these uh, parts for clear powder coat, and a crap load of aluminum machine parts were sent out for black anodizing. And we are not done yet, folks. We got one more whopper of a project. We are going to replace the entire Bosch electronics, wiring, and pretty much everything associated with it with a MoTeC system. What you're looking at is a MoTeC M130 and a power distribution module and a MoTeC keypad. These will all go into the bike and give us incredible amounts of control. Here you see the new MoTeC ECU mounted in the tail, and here is the new PDM mounted up front in front of the airbox. And last is the new dash by AIM that will uh, go right in the middle there of our dashboard, and you can see also the MoTeC keypad on the left. To get all these new systems to work, we have to pull out the stock BMW wiring harness and replace it with a new one. So what you're going to see now is a series of uh, photos showing the wiring, the connectors, uh, lots of shrink wrap, and of course uh, dielectric grease. If you don't know what that is, you should. Uh, labeling everything that we put on the bike, on the wiring harness, and a crap load of planning and documentation. And here's the beauty shot of the engine bay with all the new wiring. A total of nine hours was needed on the motorcycle dyno to tune the new brain to make Mechanico run like the fine-tuned machine he is. So what does all this mean? Well, it means Mechanico and I successfully completed half a dozen backcountry discovery routes, three trips to Mexico, a big trip to Cuba, and an uncountable amount of day trips and rides around western United States. Now it is time for the big trip, my friend. Congratulations, if you made it through that montage, you are a complete motorhead motorcycle freak. Uh, keep in mind that I will put a link down below to a written version of the Build a Mechanico. Uh, I did over on ADV Rider. Um, the link will be down there. It's a lot of detail if you're into that. So thanks for joining along on this first pre-episode uh, as we build and get Mechanico ready for the big trip. Next up on pre-episode number two, we're going to be working on the back end of uh, our buddy here. We're going to be working on the racks, the luggage, and the muffler. So stay tuned for pre-episode number two coming up.